So today it's just kind of looking at how hypnotherapy and NLP works with chronic disease. So the scenario. Okay, a client comes in. This is my client. Here's an arm. And he comes in and this client's disease in this case, this is what we talked about, the disease we'd look at was, is multiple sclerosis. And so this client says, okay, these are the things that are happening. I have, possibly, they have, they can have tingling in their legs. Their feet feel like sandbags, like there's 20 pound sandbags on their feet. Her arm, her hand is numb. She experiences numbing in her fingers, especially. And there's a sense of unbalance. If she moves or turns very quickly, she'll lose her balance. So this client will come in and they, all of them, same, always ask, you know, what can you do for me? Okay. Mm -hmm. What can you do for me? Well, what we're going to explain today is how hypnotherapy and NLP works for this kind of issues. The thing is, in order to be able to do something, we need to know what we're looking for. What are we looking to do? What is our goal here? Okay? One of the goals, the most common goal in how hypnosis is usually used, and NLP, is we just look for relief. We're looking to help with the numbing, with the tingling. Also, another of the very common symptoms is fatigue and sometimes pain, neuro, neuro, neuropathy kind of pain in the, in the body. And hypnotherapy and NLP works with this, with things such as, and you'll remember from our classes, with things such as going down into a control room, having them actually envision that they're in the control room of their bodies and have them envision that there's dials and they can actually dial down and dial up pain and discomforts and numbing. And it takes practice, but they can then do it by themselves when they start noticing it. Another thing that you can do to create relief is uh, self-hypnosis tapes, typical things that you can download on internet in which it's just a deep relaxation and then the hypnotist just gives you words of feeling better, things are softening every day better and better, et cetera, et cetera. Those are different things that can create relief. Also in hypnosis, you can go into the pain and you can loosen it or you can drain it. You can also take an uh, area of the body that is actually perfectly okay and have them move that sensation of perfectly okay into the area that isn't okay. With NLP, you can do the dynamic spin. This is actually when there's a sensation in the body, you can actually have the client, and I've done this, I've done this in bars at 3 a.m. in the morning, you know. <laughs> <laughs> which, so it, or it can be done any moment, you know, in which you have the client imagine taking, taking out the pain, seeing what it looks like, seeing what it's doing, sending it out, seeing how it's spinning, and get it to spin the opposite way. Because the solution is always right behind the problem. So if the problem feels like it's spinning in one way, you get the client to spin the other way, put it back in, and they actually will receive quite a bit of relief. A lot of my MS clients use that always. Whenever they start noticing it's coming on, they throw it out, find the spin, spin it backwards, put it back in to calm the body. But there's a second goal that we can do with <coughs> hypnotherapy and NLP, which is to resolve. What we're doing here is we want to find the cause and once we find the cause of why the body is doing these and why this disease has manifested, then 
we can find a solution. This is a typical thing that happens when you go, when you have any problem and you go to a hospital, what they're trying to do immediately is getting as much tests as they can do so they can find a probable cause. Because once they find a probable cause, then they can find a whole bunch of solutions to that cause. What some, what hospitals are doing, so there's actually four different type of causes, and that's what we're going to be looking at, hypnosis. The typical cause that most people are used to is actually, it's called causa, form, uh, causa materiales. Italian. Which means the material cause, which means the physical cause. As I just alluded to in the hospitals and stuff, what they're looking for is what is happening physically in the body. Is there too much hormones, not enough hormones, overreactive autoimmune, you know, immune, dis immune system, underactive, so that I can do something to it. With hypnotherapy and NLP, we can affect this. For example, if the person comes in with the broken, broken bones, with hypnotherapy you can actually accelerate the healing by having them imagine the bones coming back together, the cells gluing, and all these little uh, visualizations will actually accelerate the healing process. Even, for example, you can have them prepare for a heart surgery and have them, again, heal the, the surgery area very quickly. Keep the body from overreacting to chemotherapy, for example. So, one of the places that we will look for the cause of a problem, the typical one is material, the physical. But that's only one of four. So if we only stay here, we're missing 75% of the causes. The second cause is called causa efficiens. What does that mean? The cause is actually in the past, and it is affecting the present moment. With our example of MS, what we do is, for example, we will go in hypnosis and ask the unconscious to take us to the first time the condition began. And the unconscious will take us to an event perhaps when they're seven or take us in the event of the first exacerbation. And there we can see what was happening in the past that created the combustion for what's now being expressed in the body, the illness. We can also, with NLP, also has ways of going into the past. It's what's called the timeline. You have someone going into the now, explaining what's happening in the now, feeling and sensing that area and slowly walking until they can find, they keep seeing until they find the first moment that sensation began in their bodies. So they can both. So we can track what was happening in the past that might have created it. In this area of cause, what we start discovering is that there's a series of beliefs and behaviors that were created in the past that is now affecting the body. Behaviors such as, I'm not worth it, I'm not worthy, I don't deserve health, affects physically the body. Um, beliefs such as, I need to meet your needs to the detriment of mine, will make you sick. Because you never, you, are block, you block yourself from your own needs. The belief, I don't have needs, is another one that happens frequently with MS. And that is an intentional blocking, I don't have needs. Another of the causes of what is going on in the body is called causa formalis. This is what I mentioned to you the last few days. Um, in causa formalis, the cause is actually being reflected in the symptoms being expressed. In this case, it's not about, so the la last one, I'll just allude to it so we know it. Um, the last one is causa finalis, the, the future affecting the now. 
But in this one that we're speaking about now, it is a, it is a pattern that the disease is actually reflecting a pattern that if you take their case history and medical history and accidents and things that happen in their life, that pattern has been there for a very long time reflecting where they need to develop as a human, where they need to evolve, where they are unbalanced. In the case, for example, of MS, this unbalance that they are experiencing physically in the body is actually reflecting a very strong unbalance between the doer, you know, doing every day. It's like, wake up, I have to do this, I have to do this. Taskmasters, masters, you know, they've got that list and they're just on it, on it, on it, on it, on it. And life doesn't work that way. They're, it's like, ask, it's like, you know, uh, filling up a room of positive ions. There's going to be, there's, there's going to be the need for negative ions to balance those positive ions at some point. It's going to attract something that stops, that you know, creates a balance. And that's the same thing that's happening, is the body is saying, you, are, you have created a very large imbalance. You can't do your way through life. You must do and then be. You must be receptive. You must give, but also receive. If you're just a giver in life, there's going to be a gap. And it's, it's a universal law. And the body is reflecting that gap. If it's not being resolved in the mental level, it will be resolved in the physical level. So these are the causa formales. How do you go in and find the formal causes of disease? You go in hypnosis, you do that relaxation, you take them down into the room of the body part and find out what is important about the fact that, for example, most of the tingling or the numbing happens to be on the right side. What is important about the right hand? And so you can go into the body part and the body area and ask questions. What are you wanting to express? Also, you can get clues outside of hypnosis by asking the client, what are these symptoms letting you do more of? and keeping you from doing, because there is already clues of what it's tried, trying to create or rebalance in the person. So in this case, we go in hypnosis down into the body part, or we do parts work and speak to the body part, or an NLP. I've actually had, in which I've told the person to imagine that in front of me is their MS, and then I have the MS sit and cross the room and we talk to it. <coughs> Apart from that, as I just alluded, I can speak to the body part, I speak to the disease to get information, and we speak to each one of the symptoms, because each one has a message to tell. It's not just the combination, each one of them is talking about a certain piece of the puzzle, a certain need an over-perfectionism, for example, when there's a lot of stuff going on and a lot of headaches. Um, having very, very high standards that you can't meet, so it's just why even try. A lot of times it's related to fatigue. So that's what we do in to search if there's any formal causes going on. And then the last cause that we want to search into so that we can solve is if the cause is actually in the future. Um, an example of that would be, okay, so imagine a Martian comes to Earth and he's seeing someone like, you know, getting ready for a race. And a Martian's like, what's this guy doing? And he sees that there's a gun and the gun gets shot and the guy just starts running. You know, run like his life depends on it. If the Martian doesn't know why the runner's running, he will think, when the gun goes off, people run. But the reason why the runner's running is because he hopes in the future to win a medal, hopefully five minutes later after the gun. You know? But the reason, the cause of him reacting isn't in the, isn't in the you know, right now, it's actually in the future. So how do we get into all of this in hypnosis? We're looking for the deeper causes 
we're going to look at all of these in, a, in sessions so that we can work with the person. And another piece, I guess, part of the goal as well, I might as well add it here. I'm going to add it over here. A third goal. And that is, also an R, to remove obstacles. What does that mean? When you get diagnosed with a chronic disease, when you get diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, your doctor says, this isn't curable. You'll only get worse. Get used to being in a, get used to a wheelchair because you'll be there in less than 10 years. That is an obstacle to healing this. Because who are you to prove a doctor wrong? To prove science wrong? To be the one unique, incredible, special person that actually heals. So that's one of the things as well that we work with through hypnotherapy and NLP is to change the day of the diagnosis to have a more empowering memory or option 2.0 I always say to work through the expectations because not only a doctor expects that everybody who's looking at you expects that they look at you with pity they look at you like oh Poor thing, you're getting, you know, every day is going to be worse. Every time you have an exasperation, any time the symptoms come up, you look at yourself like, is this just going to get worse? So that's another piece that we need to work on, is removing that instant assumption that just because today you're having a bad day doesn't mean it's just going to get worse from here on out.